You were wondering where ham came from? Um, pigs, I think. Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG. Welcome to Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Steve Feltner, KE5SF. Now, he asks a very interesting question that I think a lot of hams have asked, and that is this. Where did the term ham radio come from? I met an older ham a few weeks ago, and he told me I was surprised. The fact is, there's a lot of controversy on this topic. If you look at the older ARRL books, they're devoid of the word ham. They just have amateur in there. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about this because I did a bit of research. And I think Wikipedia has the best definition. If you go to the article on the etymology of ham radio. Now, I've kind of summed up a lot of things right here, okay, the difference between ham or amateur and professional. During the heyday of landline telegraphy, which would have been in the late 1800s before they started to go to teletypes and things like that, including railroad telegraphy, which again used a somewhat different code from the code that we use on radio. Interestingly, the old American Morse code had dits, daws, and something in between, and they had different levels of spacing. So, and then there was one letter that was a long da, that was zero. Did all different things. We talk about a dit and a da, but there were really slightly different characters. For example, the Morse for the ampersand was dit, 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 dit in the old code. And that's not a full space in between. It's dit, 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 just so that you can tell. And we write that down as ES, but you hear that a lot on the air, dit, 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 dit which is and an ampersand, actually. Okay. Now, during the heyday of telegraphy, poor operators earned several derogatory monikers, including plug, ham-fisted, and lid. Uh, lid is occasionally used now for a poor operator, but not nearly as much as when I first got into ham radio 50 years ago. You never hear plug anymore, but ham, ham fisted, meaning not being able to send code very well. By the way, the Morse code that we adopted for radio was really a subset of the German Morse code, which did use just dit and da. The C in the old landline code was did it dit with a shorter space in between, did it, did, like that. But, in, you know, it's, it's da, 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 did right now for C, okay? So that comes from Europe, since been standardized as ITU, International Telecommunications Union, alphabet number one, okay? There are several additional character sets for like umlauts and things like that, but uh, for our code, we don't use them. So when radio first came along, early spark gap transmitters were very broad band. They took up huge portions of the spectrum, so every station competed with others for spectrum. The commercial operators, frustrated with amateurs interfering with their stations, continued calling them hams. Now, as damped wave spark transmitters gave way to vacuum tube-based continuous wave transmitters, which is where the term CW comes from. The spectrum problems were sorted out, but the name for amateurs stuck. The pejorative term is still found in terms such as ham actor or hamming it up, okay, meaning opposite of professional. Now the classical meaning of amateur, okay, is someone who is skilled at something but not paid for it. The term is particularly prominent in sports and is part and parcel of the Olympic heritage. The Olympic heritage is that all the athletes are amateurs. They do what they do because they love it and they get sponsorship from somebody else. This dates back to the first Olympics where the Olympic athletes were from the upper crust of English society, where they had lots of money, they didn't need somebody to sponsor them, they just did it by themselves. Sponsors came in a little bit later. Someone who is particularly skilled as an amateur can go pro, meaning be paid. It means go professional and get paid for it. For example, um, a lot of the skaters 
in the Olympic Winter Olympics are amateurs. They're sponsored by whatever. And when they get their medals, they then go pro by joining ice shows. Disney has one and so on. And these people are fantastic at what they do and do stuff in these shows that would have won them Olympic medals because they did them in shows and they did win the Olympic medals. Okay. Early amateur radio books and magazine articles avoided the term ham. You don't see them. But it has crept into regular use. Now we hams wear the widely recognized name with pride. In fact, the largest ham radio gathering in the world calls itself Hamvention, short for ham radio convention. Now, there are several debunked stories about the origin of the term. It is not an acronym. It's just a word, like meaning ham-fisted or ham-actor or something like that. Old ham's tales about coming from a certain trio of people or a trio of radio pioneers have been shown to have no basis in fact. So the Wikipedia provides several additional debunked examples. So it's ham, lowercase h, lowercase a, lowercase m, or ham. It's a word, not cap h, cap a, cap m as an acronym. It's not an acronym, okay? Now, I imagine the comments will go wild on this one, but I stick with the old definition, which is ham, lowercase, spelled out, okay? There you have it. Until we next meet, 73.